Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second edition of Committed to the Grind. Yes, it is a bit out later, but that's okay. So, last week we had Olin Chamberlain on, and this week a man that needs no introduction, but we'll introduce him anyway. Committed to Ohio State, four-star defensive tackle, Max Roy. Welcome to Committed to the Grind. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Now, you got to outdo Olin Chamberlain from last week. I think we can get that done. Um... But yeah, this week, Max Roy, next uh, next week, Luke Sanita, uh, captain soccer team, so we'll be having that going. And yeah, I think we should just get right into it. So first question I think we should ask is, how are you feeling? You're injured right now. So how are you feeling? I feel pretty good. I'm happy with the season's going so far. All right. Sounds good. Cole, uh, you haven't gotten a word in yet, so we'll start with you. First yeah, question. all right. I'll start with the first question. So just a reminder, every D1 program in the country wanted you. Did you feel more pressure because of all the eyes on you? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, there's pressure, even if there wasn't D1 programs looking at you, me, like because of the school that we go to, just playing football, there's a lot of pressure. But, you know, I, I felt like just from how we were, uh, you know, coached and just like walked through the process, it wasn't that much pressure just once you realize the, you know, the bigger picture of all of it, you know, just that you're really trying to recruit the school to see like what school fits you instead of the other way around. All right. And so I'm going to start off with last season. So obviously you guys won the state championship. Is Was there any obstacles, difficulties, anything that surprised you from last year? Mm. Uh, last year was a little different, you know, just because at the start of the season, our offense and just us as a team weren't clicking like, you know, we expected going into the season. But, you know, that team – I said was really good at, you know, just battling through adversity. So, you know, that, that was probably the only surprise I had all season. You know, everything else, we went pretty much as planned. Any particular way you guys uh, fought through that adversity on the field or did you guys do it off the field? Um, A good game that I could say we fought through a lot of adversity was Lakeland. We went down early into a real hostile environment. Uh, you know, all the senior guys, you know, we came together at halftime, battled the back, ended up blowing the team out probably, I think, 40-some to 21. Wow. All right. Cool. So you're a state championship wrestler. How did that influence your greatness on the football field? Uh, i say it gave me, you know, to certain physical abilities, you know, some of the toughness that you gain from wrestling. Uh, You know, if you ask any wrestler, they, they'd say the same thing, that wrestling helps you so much with football. All right. Um, so obviously we know you as football player, defensive tackle, this, that, the other. But I feel like we don't know you much outside of football. So is there anything that we should know about you outside of football, hobbies, you know, anything you like, et cetera, something like that? I mean, I feel like most people describe me as a fun guy. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy. I'm like any other teenager. I like video games, uh, like, you know, going out, like just hanging out with friends. Um, you know – I say I say I'm pretty simple, you know. Prep takes up a lot of your time, so I'm usually just out hanging out with friends if I get any free time. Any favorite video game? Favorite video game? Um, try not to say any uh, sports game. I'd say mm -hmm. uh, hmm, say Modern Warfare Two. Modern Warfare Two, of course. I, I, I'm a big COD fan myself, so I love that answer. Um, yeah, cool. Go ahead. So speaking of like outside the prep, what does your family mean to you and the freedom they gave you in chasing your dreams? Uh, they gave me a lot of freedom, you know, going to the school, you know, it's, it's hard on family, you know, it, it costs a lot of money. Uh, and like the stuff that I asked for to try and pursue my goals, of athletics, whether that was training or traveling out to games and matches, then they always helped me, you know, achieve my goals. All right. Um, we're talking a lot about the good. Unfortunately, we got to talk about the bad. This year, you guys did lose to St. Edwards and just recently LaSalle. And throughout the LaSalle game, the defensive line, had a bit of trouble getting to the quarterback uh, early. Do you think your presence was felt in that um, in those losses? Uh, you know, I th personally, I think just watching, I thought the D-line played great. I think that, you know, with our team, you kind of have to scheme around them to try and get the ball out quicker, you know. You know, LaSalle likes to take their shots, but they didn't, weren't able to hit a lot of big shots because I think they were scared to hold the ball for too long. But, I mean, of course, I, I think, you know, things could have been different if I played, but that's if or that's just a whole bunch of ifs. 
But overall, I thought we played good. I just think we just had to finish in that game. Cool. So because of your injury, you were on the sidelines this year. How did that make you realize how much you love football and what does it mean to be hunting for that state championship on the, what, like, what did it mean to you to be hunting for a state championship? Uh, it means a lot. You know, the idea of having three rings means a lot to me. So, you know, even though I'm injured, I, I try and find whatever I can do to help the team. You know, whether that is helping with the film, trying to do whatever I can to help the coaching staff too. All right. Um, currently, the prep on Max Preps is ranked uh, ninth in the state. Now, I think that is absolutely ridiculous, <laughs> and I have no problem saying that. But why do you think the prep is not ranked a bit higher, even after the losses this far, thus far? I mean, honestly, we lost LaSalle, and I think it's kind of a thing of our dominance that, you know, when they see us falter a little bit, they take it for a bigger thing than it is. And, you know, that just shows to our ability and our greatness that when we fall down that people try and run with them, you know, pushing us down to number nine. That's just obvious uh, example of that. All right. Good. And, and how does like, I, I assume like this year you're taking more of an underdog mentality as a team this year. Like, what does that mean to you? And um, I mean, I, I would say, I, w- I wouldn't agree that we're uh underdog mentality. We know we're the prep and we know that, you know, there's an expectation, the standard that we have to keep to that we are supposed to be, every team we play, you know, it's different this year because of the, the people that we have, you know, just, uh, you know, different uh, people now as leaders. But I think we, we keep, keep the same mentality that we have standard that we keep to. All right. What's that a, a follow-up to mine? Yeah, that was a little bit of follow-up, so I'll okay. go again. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, so what is the silver lining of being a support role as a senior instead of being dominant on the field? Uh, it's different, you know, it takes a little bit to get used to, but, uh, you know, I, I enjoy still being with guys as much as I am. All right. Uh, so obviously now we had to talk about the prep. We got to talk about Ohio state and all that. Um, so basic first question, why Ohio state? Oh, uh, well, for me, it was the coaching staff and the people they have there, you know, they just have amazing coaches, amazing people just all around the facility. And over my recruiting process, I got to know the D-line coach really well, and that's someone who I just really want to be coached by for the next three or four years. All right, cool. So you talk about the D-line coach. Was there any other coach or representation of the university facilitate, facilitating your signing at with being a big part of your recruitment? Um, a great guy who's a part of my recruitment is Coach Knowles, who is a uh, prep alumni. I can't name exact class, but he was a big part of my recruitment. You know, someone that I, you know, was very fond of as soon as I met him. Uh, when he first came to the school to recruit me, uh, I met him in the foyer. And just some, since then, our relationship's been really well. Is that also a follow up or? Okay. Um, another guy that has committed to Ohio State, Isaiah West. And it seems like when you guys did commit to Ohio State, was that planned or did your stars just align in some way? No, it wasn't planned at all. It starts just some lines. Um, I'd already been looking at Ohio State for a little bit. By the time that I was thinking about committing, Isaiah was already committed to Kentucky. Then when Ohio State offered, he decommitted. And then a little bit after that, I, I committed for, I think, maybe a couple weeks after that. All right. Did, uh, after Isaiah committed, did that, like, kind of dead set it? Or did you just, like, think about it on your own? No, I mean, that's – when you're making such a big decision, you try not to take everything out of it. Of course, it was in the back of my head, like, you know, Isaiah is a really good friend of mine. Definitely. And I would love to play football with him for another three or four years. But I tried to keep that out of my decision. All right. Cool. Staying on the topic of Ohio State, can you try to put into words what it's going to be like to run out onto the horseshoe in that type of atmosphere? Um, I've only been to one game, and the energy is just electric. The thought of just being able to walk out there and play in that field, play for that uh, those fans, it's just amazing. Alrighty, and so for me personally, I think the two uh, conferences currently and for the future are the Big Ten and the SEC. Those are the conferences that I think are going to dominate for years to come. Um, but you looked at most schools in the um, in the Big Ten, Rutgers, Michigan, and Ohio mm-hmm. State. Was there anything that you saw in the Big Ten that made you want to commit to that com- or to a team within that conference that you didn't see in the SEC? Oh, well, for me, it was just the type of football that they play in the Big Ten. You know, I'm a, obviously I'm a bigger set dude. I'm a guy who loves to play, you know, hard-nosed football. 
and the Big Ten, they play that type of football, and that's just something I want to be part of. I know in the SEC a lot, they sometimes change positions uh, when you get to those sort of schools. Yeah, the SEC is a little bit more, uh, if you watch the football, a little bit more spread out, you know, a lot more offensively focused. All right. I think the Big Ten, that's somewhere where I could flourish with that style, you know, you know, pound in the run type of football. All right, cool. So obviously you're, you're an elite player. At one point in your football career, did you understand that you could play at the highest level of the college game? Uh, well, I'd like to say that I always thought that. Uh, I remember my first college visit was back when I was in eighth grade. Uh, so I've always had in the back of my head that I thought that I could play at the next level. But the moment when I definitely realized that was my freshman year and the first time I got to talk to a college coach, you know, uh, realizing that, you know, recruiting, being recruited to play D1 football is a big, can be a future month. All right. Now, since, you know, we're talking about the Big Ten, we obviously got to talk about Penn State because Cole and I, we, we root for Penn State. And so, now I always talk to my grandfather. We always, He always says, why does Penn State never go down to the prep and, uh, you know, get some of these guys and this, that, or the other? And obviously, uh, Cam is one of the first guys to commit there, and he flipped from Duke. Uh, one of the first guys, I think 2015 is the uh, – mm-hmm. Is the uh, is the right uh, year? But why do you think that Penn State has not heavily, or not only say heavily, but has not landed more guys from the prep? Because the prep's one of the better schools in the, really the country. Um. Well, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, it was just the coaching staff. I, I feel like, you know, no disrespect to their coaching staff. I think they have great people over there, from their D line coach all the way up to the head coach. But I just feel like, um, the coaching staff compared to some of the other schools, I was. Uh, thinking about going to in comparison, I just thought that they had a better staff, and just uh, I just like the atmosphere that of some of the other schools more than Penn State, you know. And that, that's just my opinion. You know, some people are going to say different stuff about why they didn't go to Penn State because it, it's it's a great it's a great program, great people there. But that was just my reasons. And uh, you said something. You you mentioned something like the best coaching staff when you were looking at you know who the defensive line coaches were. You looking at just who the best defensive line coach or who puts guys in the league, or are you just kind of looking at the best fit for your game? Uh, I think it's it's more relationship-based than, like, looking at who they put out because, you know, there's some guys, no matter what, just from their athletic ability and, like, the work they put in outside, they're going to go uh, go that next level. But for me, it was a relationship and just imagining myself being coached by that person, uh, you know, thinking about with football that you're going to be with someone for maybe over – probably more than 300 days a year. It, like, if I can't match myself spending that much time with them, I can't go to that school. All right, cool. Are there any current or past, you know, NFL players that you're trying to model your game after? Um, An easy one to say is I, I look at a guy who's dominating right now in the league, Dexter Lawrence. He plays, you know, uh, over the tackle, over the center, just pretty much – all over the D-line. That's what I want to be, just versatile and able to just create havoc that way. Uh, last question here about Ohio State. Um, you know, you see some freshmen get on campus, and, um, you know, they immediately make an impact. They immediately start. Some have to wait their turn. What What do you expect to be? Do you expect to wait, or do you expect to, uh, you know, just immediately start and immediately get some playing time? Well, I can't, I can't say that until I get up there, obviously, but they're definitely getting a big overhaul on the D-line this year with a lot of them leaving. So I think it's going to be definitely a competition between uh, me and some of the other D-linemen who are going to be there. But uh, hopefully, you know, the goal is obviously when I get up there is to make an impact because, you know, that's the type of player in person I am. I just want to make an impact as soon as I get up there. Is there anybody that, you know, you're looking at, like, I got to get on their level and I got to, you know, try and outwork out uh, what they're doing currently? Uh, I mean, I can't I can't say any particular person. I know the seniors this year, uh, when I went up there for my visit, being able to watch how they, uh, you know, work, that's kind of the standard that I want to meet between, um, you know, JT, uh, J- uh, Jack Sawyer, those guys, um, you know, just all of them, just people that I want to be able to match their work ethic. That's JT, guys. Yeah, it's insane great, that guy great player yeah. massive uh cole go ahead yeah so continuing to talk about the players who are the players that hosted you and what was that experience like uh i got hosted by will smith 
Um, and I, that, that was that was the main person hosting me, but I, I was around a couple other D linemen. Um, it, it, for for me, it was great. Just seeing like some of the other stuff uh, that I didn't see on some of my other OVs, like the places that the apartments that people stay in at Ohio State's, the you know the area of uh, Columbus. Now it's just great to see, um, you know, talking to them about more personal stuff like what it's like being coached and uh, what it's been like during game days and just hearing all the information stuff you really don't get to hear from uh, other people. All right. Uh, now we're going to move back over to the prep here. Um, obviously the expectation for this team is to win a state championship because that's been the expectation for the past 10 years almost. Um, other than that, is there any expectation or goal that you put on the team? Um, you know, obviously I'm a defensive guy and I say every year our expectation is to be best defense in the in PA, best defense in the country. And I think, you know, we have the guys do that this year. And I, I expect them, you know, just as the season gets, uh, keeps going on, just for us to keep getting better. Any particular guy that's really uh, ascended you guys up uh, up there since you're, uh, because of your injury? Um, <laughs> I want to make his head any bigger than this, but Alex Haskell, you know, he's a guy that uh, I think we've definitely leaned on. He's a big stout person in the D-line. Who I definitely say has been, you know, holding it down while in my absence from the D line. Right. Cool. Now you just met, mentioned Alex Haskell as being the reason that your defense has um, ascended to be one of the better in uh, the state currently. Uh, do you think him, or is there anybody else that you think will take your place as the top defensive lineman for the prep once you're gone? I mean, uh, Haskell is. Uh, I think it's not crazy to say that he's the best defense lineman we have right now playing. So I think he'll probably be the best defensive lineman next year since he's only a junior. Um, of course, we got guys who are still, uh, I think, have a lot of uh, potential to be really good, like Jay Nitz, um, uh, Colton Anderson, both guys who are starting right now, I think have potential to definitely be really good for us next year. It, it, and they are really good for us right now. Something I think is some, who's pretty fast and can come from the off-ball spot, uh, off ball linebacker spot is Boggs. I think he does yeah. a good job. Mm-hmm. I, I think if he gets faster, too. He's going to mm-hmm. be a beast. Do mm-hmm. any, any, you have anything like about him? Uh, yeah, he's a uh, – I, I spent a lot of time box. He's a wrestler, so uh, one of my favorite guys who's on the team. He, he's going to be definitely good for us next year. I can imagine him being a, you know, a big star for us. We did hear – I think it was on Twitter that he got he got you in a uh, one of the matches in uh, practice or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I'll let, if you guys ask Fox, I'll let him say that. But I don't think that happened. We did. We did interview him last year, and he did. Uh, he he did comments on uh, something like that. But um, you know, we'll we'll, we'll move on here. Um, I talked earlier about immediate impact about college, but I'd like to talk about immediate impact at the prep. Jet Harrison has been great. Um, you know, I did I did play by play for uh, the game on uh, Friday. He had a touchdown. He played had. A, what, two against Father Judge? I mean, he's been great in the red zone and all over the field. Can you talk about his immediate impact for the team? Uh, you know, he's a great player. He's uh, – even though he's only been a freshman, he's only a freshman now, he's been around the team for a little bit uh, because of uh, his dad coaching here. He's been at practice for a little bit. So he sees how things get done. And, you know, I'm not shocked a little bit that he's made an immediate impact like this. He's just that good of a player. I think um, – more than excited to just keep tuning back in the prep and over the years, see how he develops as a uh, player. There's no doubt that the prep does, uh, you know, look at other guys to see who they might want to come to their program. Is there any guys that maybe you've seen from, you know, I know we get a lot of guys from South Jersey and stuff like that. Is there any guy like maybe in like eighth grade or something like that that you think could come to the prep and make an impact? <sighs> I mean, I can't say. I, when I was a freshman, I looked more at that in uh, sophomore year, but now I don't really look at uh who's coming into the prep, but I mean, any, anybody we bring in, I think will be uh, good for us. Uh, I'm excited to see what our team's going to look like next year. All right, Cole, finish us off with a bang. All right. So did you ever give a second of consideration to the university of Michigan? <laughs> uh, I mean, they're a great school, great program, but uh, I think, all I'll say is go Buckeyes. Uh, I'm, I'm stuck well, with that. I, nonetheless, I don't think that's any – I think that's it. I mean, I think we I think we're a pretty successful interview. I I mean, I think we'll let the uh, audience decide, did that top Owen Chamberlain's interview. 
Um, Cole, is there anything else that you have to say? I think I we're nothing. good. I'm good. Max, anything else you'd like no, to say? I think I'm all good. All right. Well, once again, thank you very, very much for coming on to the show. Um, we hope to see you again when you come back to the prep. And uh, you'll see me on the field, obviously, doing interviews and stuff like that. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for the latest uh, listening to the latest edition of Committed to the Grind. We will see you next week. Luke Sanita will be on. Thank you.